Hey everyone, I am the Avid Assistant and welcome to another video. Uh, this is just a video to go over the main changes in the new Avid UI for those who are still transitioning over from 2018 or previous. I know more and more post houses now are starting to introduce it as Mojave comes to end of life. So if you're just getting around to it and you haven't been familiar before, I'll go over all of the main differences and changes, particularly to do with navigating around the UI, show you how to use them, show you how to navigate it. And at the end of the video, I'll also show you how to conform the new Avid to look and function just like the old Avid, if that's something that you'd rather do. Um, hope you enjoy it. Hope there's something useful there for you. And you know, if, if there is, then please do give us a, a like, subscribe and hit the notification bell at the end. Cheers. Thanks. Right, now for number one, I'm just going to dive right into the elephant in the room, which is the titler. So if you're on macOS and you are on a version of macOS beyond Mojave, which is 10.14, I believe, then you will no longer have access to Avid's classic title tool. If you are still on Mojave or have the option and availability to downgrade to it, then you can install Avid's legacy components, which they've released, which is basically, you know, any old 32-bit code tools can be re-imported back into Media Composer as a separate installer. And that is available on Avid's website from the download center. You can grab those whenever you like, and you'll be able to continue using Title Tool as you always have in 1080p projects. But alas, I am on macOS 12.3.1 pretty close to the newest version. And so if I go to Tools and Media Composer, the title tool is no longer an option. It is not there. So what to do about titling? Now, we know that our given tool from Avid is the new Titler Plus, which has taken a lot of slack and it has been getting slowly, steadily better, um, but it is still not quite ready yet, in my opinion. But if you want to take a crack at it, um, I will get, show you a run through of it. Right. So say, for example, I would like to put a title here uh, over this black before this short film begins. So a couple of ways I could go about it. I could go to my effects palette title and drag Avid Titler Plus from in there. Or if you just have the track selected and mark the area you want, just click the Avid Titler Plus button. And you'll be brought up with the controls, both Effect Editor and the Avid Titler Plus window. I would recommend staying in the Titler Plus window for any anything to do with Titler Plus. I've run into a lot of issues trying to tweak it from within Effect Editor. It can be done, but it's just a lot more finicky. These con controls are more intuitive. So we've got our title button enabled. I'm just going to click in here and go Avid Test Title. And there we go. We have a very basic title that we can move around, place. We can scale by dragging corners if we want to, or we can do it down here. We can create objects. So I'll draw a shape here that I can move around. I can send it to the back. These two buttons down here, you can throw stuff to the back of the front and you're layering. We've got rotation, alignment, scaling, color, outline. You can cycle through the various layers with these buttons here. So if you've got a whole bunch of different titles and shapes, you can cycle between them, change your fonts, and we now get a nice live preview of our fonts as we scroll through. If the text within your box is centered within the box, uh, over here, center line, then you can then align it to the center of the screen here. There's align horizontally, and then here's align vertically. So now you've got text right in the very middle. So hopefully, you know, bugs and crashes are eliminated in the next few months and iterations of Media Composer. 
I will be leaning more on it because I do love the idea and in theory it's great. Uh, I just want it to crash less. If you're still very unhappy with Tyler Plus, like I said, for temp titles, time code generator and subcap will do fine. And there are other options from Boris and New Blue, as well as you know jumping into Photoshop After Effects and making titles there. The next major thing for us to go through, uh, most obvious one, is of course our docked panels interface. Uh, this new redesign in Avid Media Composer where we can shift and resize a panel and everything's attached to everything. And many people are quick to accuse it of being very Premiere Pro-like. And as someone who's only used Premiere Pro I think once in the last 10 years, I can't really comment on that. Um, but I do find it to be a, a very tiny, to be honest. And, and particularly useful for stuff like this, like video recordings and, and things where say you're you're bringing in a laptop with media composer and you're stuck with this one small monitor for, and you need to make a few edits you can have lots of tools very quickly available to you um, by just by having them docked and hidden so for example here i've got my composer up here but i've also got my markers window quickly available to me i've got my timeline down here but i can also just shift to a tab and there's my audio mixer up here, I've got all my bins, but I've also got my effects palette with all my effects. And so I can dock and tab things all day long um, and squish them into one space to have all my tools available to me without calling them up and throwing them away when I need them. Um, but how do you use these new features and um, dock and tab? Well, the, the tabs of the different windows are highlighted here and named. So Composer, Bins, Timeline. And you can just click and drag these uh, to dock them whenever. And you'll notice as soon as you click and drag, so I'll do it with my timeline here, all of these highlighted green areas come up. So this is everywhere that I could dock this window. So if I wanted to dock it in between my Bins and my Composer window, I'm not sure why you would, but we can. So you'll see what happens here then it's right and smack in between them. Right, now that's how you would move docked windows around. Oh, I can grab my bins. I can put them here. I can move this around. Docking and redocking windows all day long. And that's what that would look like. Now, this is a hot mess, so I'm going to put it back. So that's how you would drag and redock and move around your windows. And then what you do, you can resize them and move them around and whatever. But what if you want to tab them? So say, for example, I've got my effects palette up here, tabbed in along with my bins. So I'm just going to drag that out. If you drag one of these tabs and just move them anywhere that's not in one of these green highlighted areas, it will create a floating window. Now, if I wanted to dock that back in there, or with my timeline or wherever. Just again, click and drag this tab, but this time hold Option or Alt. And you can see my view changes. So now it highlights whenever I get near one of these window spaces. And then if I just let it go when I'm there, then it docks. And that's it, going to occupy the same space there. Now, this also works the same way with tabbing bins. So for example, if I grab this bin and bring it out here, I can grab the tab of that bin and drag it around. Uh, it works just like a, a tabbed window if I do it this way, but I can also hold option and throw it in there with the rest of the bins. So hold option to click and drag a window to tab it and just click and drag it to physically move it and place it. And that's your basic windows, docks, panels, reorganizing. All right, now let's take a look at bins because I know this is another sensitive subject that has came up a lot. So to access our bins in the project, we no longer use the project window, which used to be our main window where we had all of our settings. We had all of our bins and folders or project layout 
everything was there. Um, now it's it's still mostly intact, but all of our bins in our project have been moved to what's called the sidebar. Now a sidebar is attached to every bin container. So see this is labeled bins here, that is one bin container. And I can drag out from the side here to reveal the sidebar. Here's all my bins, I can scroll the project. Now if I drag one of these bins out of this bin container, it will create another bin container because every bin has to be within a bin container. Now, you, Of course, as I showed before, you don't always have to be looking at this container. You can slide this over and it just looks like a bin. And then I could dock that somewhere else and then I can drag stuff from bin to bin. And so that is where all of your bins live and how to access them. So if you're ever looking at a view like this and you want to get to the rest of your bins, click and drag over here and just slide out the sidebar. And that's where you'll find everything. Now these sidebars can be customized and renamed. We can change the color, the background color. You see I've made this a kind of lilac-y purple color. We can click over here and we can rename this. So test bin, bin container. Yeah, they're fairly customizable. But I don't like to personally have a lot of different bin containers within my project. So generally speaking, what you see up here in this corner, that's my entire left monitor generally when I'm working. So I will just have the sidebar always visible since I always used to have the project window on the left anyway. And then all of my bins would, will always just be tabbed together. So you can view all your bins here. If you want to click and drag something between bins, you can grab it and you can go like that and drop it into the next bin. Just drag it up to the relevant tab. If you end up with a lot of these tabbed bins and the names of them are becoming too small to read, there is a couple of different ways to identify them. Easiest, of course, being this drop down menu up here with this arrow. And then you get a list of all the bins and you can just Find the one you want, click to it, jump to that bin. And you can also color code your bins because why not? If you go set background color, say I'll make this one green. And then as you're tabbing around, your green bins there shown in the tab. You can also set this in your settings if you don't like bin background colors to only appear in the tabs and then you can just use this just to keep track of a visual reference of which bin is which. So say you have your cut bins one color and your source bin, scene bins another. Whatever works for you. Now one more thing that I want to highlight. I'm not exactly sure when this feature came into effect. I do believe it may have been just before the new UI. Um, but just in case is exporting with the UME engine. So say you wanted to export a H.264. Now, classically, when you're creating that op option and under your exporting, you would have the option for QuickTime Movie. Now the QuickTime engine has been discontinued in macOS, so I don't have that option here to show you, but in Windows, it is still there, I believe, and you can still do it. If you have legacy components installed, there's a good chance the option's still there for you on Mojave as well. I strongly recommend not using it since the new UME for whatever else you think of the newer Avid is significantly faster. So you'll have a lot of the same export settings as before under UME. So if you go down here, you can choose a MOV or an MP4. I'm always going to use a MOV. And then I've got lots of format settings for your image, raster, display, uh, mass margins cropping, you know, your good old fashioned color space settings, your frame rate. It also gives you a little reminder of what your project's frame rate is. So ideally they should match. And down here, so compression. So codec family, you've got access to a number of different codecs that you can use. 
So quite often I'll be using DNX or H.264 or ProRes. They're probably the most common three. But we do now also have the option to export H.265 or HEVC encoding. So if you want those uh, smaller exports, then go for your life. Um, and it has, uh, as the versions have came on since UME came out, added significantly more uh, codecs and features. So I remember right at the start, there was maybe DNX and H.264 and maybe ProRes, but now I've got EVC flavors, H.265, MPEG. So they are adding to it and Avid is bringing in more and more. Right, last thing I'm going to touch on just now is just about bringing stuff in. There's some ups and downs here. There's been a lot of issues with bringing in MP3 files. Uh, you can't really bring in, in, in a direct import, an MP3, at least. Nothing happens. And just won't let you do it. MP3, at least at time of recording and current version. Um, a workaround is to link in transcode. It is a little cumbersome, but the only time I'm generally importing MP3s is for sound effects. Now, I hear what you're saying, we import a lot of sound effects, but that is just one of the things that you do need to deal with at the moment in the current version, is not being able to import directly import an MP3. But it's not all bad when it comes to importing. Well, one thing that came particularly handy um, in the pandemic, when we were getting sent videos that were recorded at home and, and by actors or you know all kinds of places, is the ability to import HEVC since that is the one of the native codecs recorded on phones. Um, so I'm sure at least some of you have been sent iPhone footage that you had tried to import and you may have at one point had an error come up. So in classic Avid, we could bring in HEVC so long as you had, I believe it was the Nablet AMA plugin that would allow you to do it. But now we can do this natively in Avid. Just make sure that your plugin is set to link with UME. Now, quite often by it, it will automatically select this by default. It should be the preference. <clears throat> All right, so since I know that many people are still going to want to use Avid in the same old way as they always have, I'm going to show you how to conform the newer UI back to the old way. So let's get started. Here's an example of a Avid layout in version 2018 and I'm going to make my current Avid look like that. So first things first is I'm going to close all my bins here. Close all bins. I'm going to get rid of this as I've only got one bin container. And then I'm going to go to Windows and then I'm going to float all panels. So that's turned all of my panels back into floating windows, right? So this is a bin container with an effects palette and stuff. I'm going to get rid of that just now. So just to try and match that old example, put my composer up here somewhere, make my timeline a bit smaller, and cram it over here, and tools, I had the audio tool up, just put that over there, oh. no resizing. And the mixer was up as well in the description. I don't have a timeline open, but it'll show the faders when there's a timeline open or something open. And there was some other tools up as well, but before I bring those up, I'm going to restore the project window. So you'll be happy to know that you can still put this back by going tools, project, or command nine, or control nine. So click that, then you've got your 
good old fashioned project window right there. But if we want to emulate old Avid as much as we can, then we're going to want uh, we're not going to want our bins to open in bin containers and tabs. So what I'm going to do is change some settings. And you'll notice in the old version of Avid as well, our, our settings were all here within the project window. So I can't make that exactly the same, but I can tab it in here. And then at least it'll still be contained in the same place. So we can reach our settings under the file menu, file, settings and the keyboard shortcut for this is uh, shift command equals sign or shift control equals sign um, but i found that if you're on a mac you can also just do command comma and it'll bring up the window as well so like i showed you earlier i'm going to grab this and then hold option tab that in there right so we've got our settings and with our project window now I'm just going to make some changes to how our bins open. So first I'm going to go to user settings and then bin. And then I'm going to say creating a new bin or opening a closed bin floats the bin. So it doesn't automatically tab into a container. So I can OK that. Right now if I jump back to the project part of the project window and I double click a bin it'll open as a floating bin. I can open another one and another floating bin. So I will close that. Now, my monitor isn't exactly the right size to try and mimic this, but I will do my best. That was about like there. The open bin was over here. Audio mixer was over the two of them. Audio tool was next to it. And then we just had a couple of other audio tools up in there. Description. Right, so that is more or less the same. Everything's floating. It's controlled pretty much the same way as your old uh, Media Composer from 2018 would be. That is how you would do that if you want to restore it back. I'm not saying you should. I love the new UI, but I'm saying that if you're missing the way everything used to be laid out, you can make it exactly like that. Um, I'd just make sure that after you've done all this, come down here and go uh, New Workspace, call it 2018. And then after you've created it, save it. And then th there was some issues at the start of the new UI in like early 2020 with um, uh, these workspaces not being remembered uh, when you tried to float everything. But I do think that's mostly been resolved and fixed now. So you should be good to go. And I can demonstrate that here. If I go to my uh, rec, workspace which I was using for the tutorials and I'll go store to saved things are once again tabbed these floating windows are just left over from being open in the other workspace and then if I go back to my 2018 workspace everything's floating again back to 2018 so there you go that's how you can restore your classic Avid and use it in the old way, if that's what you want to do. So, hope this video was useful to you. Um, I hope I've alleviated at least some concerns of some people moving over from 2018 to the newer version. Um, or maybe you have already and you're just wanting to know how to do some stuff and how, how to navigate it. So I really do hope that I have helped in some way. Um, if not, if, if I didn't address something that you did want to know in this topic then please do let me know and i can cover it um but until next time i'm the avid assistant and thanks for watching <laughs>